Welcome to this session of Thriftland's One-Shot Adventures. I am the Game Master, Luke, also known as Thriftland, and I will be running these, this session. Over the years, I have collected a large number of different role-playing games, many of which I have never gotten a chance to play, and I am still collecting now. So, I have decided to take up doing these one-shot adventures as a way to try out some of these different systems and see how they work. Some of these systems will be very well known, possibly even popular. A uh, number of them will be obscure and independent offerings. I hope you enjoy all of them equally, and I hope that they all end up performing well. And thank you for joining us. Have a, have a good listen. Welcome back, and this is the closing episode of Ku the Kuro uh, one-shot session. This one actually did get played it all out in one shot, mostly because we got the character creation done with out of the way earlier, and one person took a pregen. This was a very fun game, and we left off where they had just been directed towards the warehouse by the ghost, and I'll leave off more for later. What do you guys think? It seems likely. Yeah, she pointed out the salt to me before. Oh, well, um, let's go, shall we? Maybe someone should stay in the bus and take care of the Co wounded and the unconscious and the little girl. Yeah, Kohei nods and says, "Yeah, yeah, I I'll stay here and make sure the 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 two wounded." Uh, stay out of trouble. Thanks. Okay. Should I get the so should I get the salt back of Kohei? Don't Your choice. Don't forget, choice. Don't forget to taste that one if it starts to wake up. It hasn't messed. Oh no, it did mess with someone on the bus. Mess with Shiori and Sho. But that was before he put the um, all of the Shinto runes and charms and stuff up. All right. Yeah, I'll I'll ask for the salt back off Co. Hey, uh, sorry, we might need it. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll don't know how good these will go do, but I'll try to keep as much of this area protected as possible if I can. So off to the warehouse. And you're looking back now. You didn't see when she disappeared, but she's no longer standing beside the warehouse. And I'm assuming you bandaged up the the dog bite on Anne's leg. In so much as we are able. You don't run across anything going up into the warehouse. Everything's just really quiet. There's a little bit of more drizzle to the air than there was before, making it rather wet and dismal. And it is one of the most dilapidated buildings here. It was used as a general storehouse for several of the businesses, all of which are gone. There is a large gate door big enough for a truck or a lorry with a small person-sized door set into it. Both are locked and chained shut, but they're made of wood and can easily be broken. They're, you know, rotten wood. They aren't as nearly as secure as even the mini-mart was. Should we try to pick it or just destroy it? Now it's not the time for subtlety. Now is not the time to be dead. Yet we smash the lock. Let's just, let's just get in and, and take the things. You get in easily enough, and inside the warehouse is a vast open space with several large storage shelves filling half of it. One set of shelves is covered with all manner of old clothes, personal possessions, shoes, handbags, purses, shirts, dresses, wallets, and so on. And they've all just been thrown onto different shelves as if they're getting ready for a jumble, a, a jumble sale. So what are we looking for here? Any suggestions from anybody? Uh, can I make a Shinto roll to see what we might need to free the girl from a from the possession? Yep. Uh, go ahead. It's not quite an average result. Oh, the four would reduce it to six even. Yep. Well, you can think of as kind of the obvious stuff. There is finding some possession of hers. The best thing would be to find her body. And as you can tell, I think I linked the map, didn't I? Yeah. So you do know that there is the cold storage area in the back of the warehouse, but you're in the section that's the, the with the shelves. So if you can find some personal possession of hers, or then you can, uh, that, that might be enough. All right. Why don't you girls check for, like, 
gothic looking girl's clothes, I'll go take a peek at the at the door out back. We're a bunch of clothes in her house, right? Would those work? It it could be possible. It, you you would have to start get all the way over there if you wanted to. At least John's information says it could work. You know, check here for personal possessions. We're here. We might as well investigate the place while we're here. That's true. Indeed. But the cafe in the workshop bore um, a certain mark of her presence previously. And she oh, pointed us to here. Are you getting up towards where the freezer is? I'm getting up towards where the th- freezer is, yeah. Haruka and Rin, please make me investigation rolls if you have it. Searching if you searching is better. You come to a locked freezer style door. Of course, there's no power, so there's no chill at all to it. It is locked, but it's only locked by a pin, so it can be opened pretty easily from outside. Yep, unlock it. And what was your your? It's going to be perception roll for you, Ivan, uh, Rin, since you don't have investigation. Fifteen. Fifteen. Wow, nice explosion. Yeah, I have uh, twice my perception, right? No, 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 no. You get plus zero. Oh, well, then it's eleven. Okay, because there is an actual skill connected to this. Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah, if there were no actual skill, then you would get twice. Yeah. So, are you going to go ahead and open the the freezer door, John? Yep. That's what I thought you said. You open the door and looking at. How how quickly do you open the door? Big heavy door like that. Take it cautious. Give me an awareness roll with uh, perception. So that would be oh and. You can re-roll the four because you have expertise, I believe. Yeah, I re-rolled the four already. That was the I forgot the explosion that time. Ah. So that's nine, twelve plus five is seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. You open the door. You look in and. What you see is a room full of standing naked bodies sort of just shambling around. And in the back is an actual just flat dead body hanging, wearing gothic clothing at the very far back of the the cold storage shed. But as you notice that, all the heads of the kind of shambling body sort of turn back towards you. Oh, fuck. Very descriptive. I'm thinking you might want to close the door. Yeah. Door closes, pin goes back into place. A cup of uh, about ten seconds later, you can start hearing thuds against. Really yeah. weak. Guys, there are zombies on the other side of this door, and the girl's body. Zombies? Are those things real? Uh, before you continue that conversation, can Anne and Rin please make a willpower roll? Twelve. Plus twice the start, right? Yes. Eighteen. 15? 18. 18. Wow. While you were searching in the clothes, you had this bizarre urge to just take off all your clothes and items and put them on the shelves. You were able to fight it down. Haruka only just barely fought it down, but uh, Rin, you were kind of like, no, that's crazy. Why would I do that? But you had this image of just taking everything and walking back into the cold storage room. You felt that? Yeah. What's that about? That sounds about time to move on, I think. Um, do you think cremation might be a good way to get her to move on and free her from whatever that problem creature is? We saw the bus station. Maybe we can get some, some fuel here and light the whole thing up. Are you backing up towards the e- exit of the warehouse? I'm, I'm going towards John and see what he saw and whatnot. And John, John's turning around at this point saying, there are zombies in here. Oh, the problem I'm having at the moment is we've got precious little knowledge about how to exercise the... The ghost. The girl's, the girl's body. Girl's the ghost, ghost. yes. Yeah. Like... I'm, I'm going to actually point out something. At one point, you saw the, the bus driver's ghost in the bus and her just outside trying to reach to get into the bus. Oh, okay. So, yes, John will say, you know... Maybe we need to get her on the bus, too. Um, how are we going to do that? The bus isn't even moving right now. But the bus was moving when the ghost was driving it. That is true. Wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me that whoever that ghost is brought us here so we got we could take his girl on the bus? 
I think it's too much of a coincidence to say no to that. So yes. We are not even getting paid for this. All right. So where is the girl? John will give her a a sort of slightly intense look and says, "Don't make me slap you." No, no. Seriously, do. I love slapping. I don't think you can get away with it. I think she'd pull your arms off. For that comment, it might be worth it. Anyway, there's the spirit of a little girl is trapped here with some shadowy ass hat, and we need to get her out if we're going to survive. I think that's worth a bit more than money. Yes, and if someone had asked me to help, I would probably have agreed. You hear that, well, ghost driver? Well, that's something at least. Anyway, that's not getting us anywhere. Let's. So we get something of the girl on the bus? How does this work? Okay, how I think this works. You two keep the zombies away from me. I run through, grab the girl's body, carry her back to the bus. We all get on the bus. How many zombies are there? How many thrift did I count? Uh, more than, roughly, roughly 20. There's a lot of zombies in there. They're very new slow plan. moving. New plan. I still think we burn the whole building down and free her spirit by cremation. It's a very ancient tradition in these lands, you know. And I think we need to get her on the bus. I think if we burn the body, we might just trap her here forever. Us just burning it isn't going to be a proper burial. She needs, you know, to go to a Shinto shrine or something. Well, we have a priest with us. And out of character, I should point out that cremation is traditional Shinto um, death row. I do know that it's, it's not, it's not the, uh, the means to the end in the uh, storyline. Oh, no, I was referring to um, things Doc's character should know. Well, yes. we have a priest. Maybe we should ask him. Maybe he'll be able to throw some light into this. He seems to be able to keep the spirits at bay with those sort of thingies, right? Your main problem is you don't know how they're going to keep off 20 zombies from you. Now, they are slow. Somebody could lead them along, giving somebody else a chance to get the body out. Yeah, we're dealing with two characters with wounded legs. Maybe we need to get the priest in here. The priest goes in, attracts the zombies... Drives them towards us, we help him get away. In the meantime, John takes the girl and brings her to the bus. Okay, that is a plan. Let us do that. All right. Let's go find the priest. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so we'll go find the priest. We will explain the plan, bring him back to the warehouse, and do this. Go ahead and give me a persuasion roll. 19. 19. Uh, you have uh, expertise on that, right? So you can re-roll one? No. You can re-roll your lowest, but it doesn't make sense. You don't have mastery. Never mind. Yep. Okay. He's like, okay, okay. Fine. Yeah, if it's the only way we can do it, I, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do it. This better work. And he looks over and hands the shotgun to Shiori. Say, uh, just keep an eye on them. So Okay, we go back to the warehouse. Go ahead and give me sneaking rolls. That would be deception. If you don't have deception, just roll dexterity. No, plus zero. Do I lose a dice for this? No, because this is, you know, stationary. All of us? Yeah. Yeah. All three of you, since John is also part of the... is John's the one who's going to be diving in to get the body. Yeah, and I got a four. Hey, Elon. Nine. And what did you roll on yours, Rin? Nine. Nine. Okay. Um, yeah. They're not, none of them is going to notice you whatsoever. They rolled a one. <laughs> so, Kohei opens the door, kind of opens it fairly wide, as wide as he can before he has to start running to keep the zombies from getting up to him. And just a stream of bodies, of, of zombies, goes rushing out. Go ahead and make me willpower rolls, please. Everyone? Everyone. Yeah, John is fired up. Yep. That is 14. 18. No. Okay. I got and 14? Yep. So Rin, uh, Rin's fine. Uh, John is more than fine. Haruka is going to feel kind of a chill and sort of hangs back a little. John, go ahead and give me a dexterity roll. That is a 10. No, you get in there real quick and grab the body. 
Anne and Rin, since you're more focused on the zombies passing by, please roll me aware uh, perception plus investigation, or just perception if you don't have investigation. I know none of you have awareness. So we all have to roll. You and I... Haruka are rolling because John is focused on his task at hand. Seventeen. Seventeen. Three. Three. Yeah. And I just texted to Anne what she saw in the TeamSpeak, so she can relate it. Okay. Um. In that case, I'm going to grab. Rin by the arm and point to that particular body. Okay, Rin, as uh, Haruka grabs you by the arm and points, just as some of the last zombies are coming out of the warehouse, and you recognize Shiori. Wait, who is that? That's the schoolgirl. The schoolgirl from the bus. The schoolgirl is among the zombies? Yes. I'm, sorry, I'm starting to get confused. Okay. It's a trick. I'll say. I hope I'll matter. Okay. So, John, you're coming out the girl's body. It's it's really easy to carry. She doesn't weigh much at all. As you hear Rin saying, it's a trick, I hope. Keep running, guys. We've got to move, move. Kohei's relying on us to get this done. So we move. You start running out of the warehouse, and as soon as you get out, you, you get over toward to within uh, a few meters of the bus where you can kind of see the entrance. And Shiori is standing there covered in blood with a smile on her face and this huge sword that she's leaning on and slowly puts the sword back in the crutch of her uh, shoulder and starts growing into that huge form you saw earlier as she slow claps and start. Uh, manifesting into the Oni as she slow claps and looks at you trying to carry the, the body forward. Well, well, well. Congratulations. I'm going to slip behind John and out of the Oni's line of sight, try and reach into whatever pocket he's kept the salt in to grab one. John is reaching to grab the salt. <laughs> I thought John's hands were full of gold. John, John can let go of her legs or something. I'll reach for whatever jar of salt he's not reaching for. I guess I'll try to tackle the girl onyx thingy. Right. Uh, well, just a moment yet. Go ahead and give me a reaction roll. Who gave us reaction roll? Oh, everybody. Uh, initiative. Everybody. 15. And, and his, his reaction is made of hate. 33. And what was your total? 23. Rin? 15. 15. John? I think it was 16. So he obviously goes first, and he takes a lumbering move forward, just barely moving. John, you know enough, Shinto, to know that Oni are made of dark. When it's not raining, they don't move very fast. And it's only drizzling, so it's not enough for him to move well. So he, okay. spin he spins his turn moving towards you with a wide, psychotic grin. And then it goes to uh, Haruka. Awesome. I'm going to try and pull him to one side by um, flanking him out to the left and then stabbing. Wait, which side is his sword on? Right side. Okay, so I'm going to flank on his left. Okay. And go okay. for a stab under the arm. Go ahead, make me the roll. 16. Not enough to hit. He sort of, he sort of casually sidesteps you and, and pushes you pushes aside with his sword as you made that roll. Didn't quite hit him, and kind of, and kind of chuckles. Then it goes to John. Yeah, John grabs a handful of salt and says, "Yeah, eat this asshole," and just throws it at its face. Okay, roll me a strength roll because you don't have thrown. Actually, dexterity roll. It's the same for you either way. You managed to hit. So that is 11. You needed an 8. So that is 3 over. You're going to do 2d6 plus 3. And because of the nature of this, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 6 is explode on, with the salt. Which doesn't matter. Mm. So the salt hits the Oni. You can kind of see it sort of just burning away into his face. It doesn't get do too much damage, but just like as where the salt hits, bright light just sort of appears 
and starts digging into into his skin, which is kind of bubbling like water, stagnant water being boiled. And Rin. I'm not sure what to do. You can go ahead and try to brawl with it. You can try to borrow the get the handgun. For, I can assume you have the handgun since John was uh, busy with girl. I I think I'll try to tackle it. See if I can get it from getting to the other people. You're gonna tackle it and knock it down. I, I'm not sure about knocking it down, but yeah, uh, I don't know being a nuisance. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Go I ahead. assume we're trying to get it away from the door so we can get the body into the box. Yes. Basically. Make the roll, please. 18. 18. You hit. Enough to do two damage. You go off Whoa. all up and pop it in the mouth where it's already being hit by the salt, and it kind of wipes at its jaw a little, smirks at you before we do the top of the round, and it makes its own attack. It's not using the katana yet. It's going to go ahead and make a a basically the bitch slap backhand slap against whom? Against you. Oops, I rolled wrong. Excuse me. I oh, thank God. I I added the other the wrong thing. For those who can't see it, the dice roller Thrith just rolled six d six. It's supposed to be three d six in this version. It could be 5d6, but I didn't take the uh, grudge level difficulty. So it got a 9. That, I believe, is less than your defense. Yeah, my defense is 12. So you duck under it with no problem. It is Anne's turn again. Can I taunt him? When he comes to your turn, yes, you can. You have intimidation. You can taunt him, yes. As soon as Anne has her turn. Okay. So I make another... The stabbing attack, it is um, the calf of the leg nearest me, and uh, then take a couple of steps back, hoping that he'll try and pursue me to continue engaging, and we can get him a little away from the door. Go ahead and make your full arms roll. That is awesome. 26. 26 hits by 8, so please roll 2d6 plus 11. 18. Holy crap! You actually uh, leveled a serious wound on it. Well, she was state... Oh, sorry. National Junior High Champion when she was in junior high. She's very stabby. Well, with your makeshift Naginata, you managed to cut out a large gash in its body. After that hit, it sort of turns direct facing towards you. And I'll go ahead and give Rin her turn. Technically, I know it's supposed to be John, okay. but dramatic license. I'll, I'll, like, put my hands on my on my hips and say like what's up big guy you can only work with little girls i know if i should like keep hitting at him or you said something about intimidation okay i'll give you your intimidation roll so that's going to be 3d6 plus 5 because you're christmas too that was an awful roll that's a total of eight 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 roll a one a two and a four the four is nasty um, okay. And he manages to roll a 12. So he manages to ignore your your taunting thing. I'm, a, I'm able to handle so much more than that. And John, go ahead and give me a, a strength check to make it, to make the body, bring the body to the bus, since we're running out of time. So that's 16. That is 16. But as, so as the... The Oni turns to look at, as is is uh, limping off of the the gash in its leg, and dealing with your taunting. He fails to note John rushing past, virtually throwing the uh, the body of the girl into the bus. Um, I'm assuming inside the bus there's the dead body of Kazuki and Sho. It's a slaughterhouse. You can't identify a specific body. Right. Any idea if Kohei made it back? Not that you've noticed yet. Actually, you can kind of see him on the edge now, panting and rushing and kind of clutching his side as a bunch of zombies are coming after him. He obviously hasn't done his cardio. Okay, as soon as Maiko, Mako's body gets on the bus, you, you suddenly see the bus driver, the father spirit, appear at the wheel. And 
the bus as a whole glows brightly before a incorporeal phantom version of it drives off down the road and sort of vanishes from sight. And the last thing you have is you see of it is Maiko sitting in the back seat waving at you in mournful gratitude as it vanishes out of sight. Uh, John will yell out, yeah, night bus, bitch. And as, <laughs> at that, Yoni kind of screams in rage and starts fading away as the sun starts rising up in the distance. And all the, the dead bodies that were left that Kohei was luring off just all sort of drop away. Home run, booyah. And you're left standing in the crossroads. No bus, but uh, you can always, it's daylight now. It's probably, you can probably, uh, you, eventually you, you get the idea to just walk or run as much as you can down the street. Wait, did the actual bus disappear? So it was like a phantom of it. There was a phantom of it leaving behind another bus, but you don't have, this This bus is, when you look at it, it's just completely dead. There's no way to fix it. Okay. The only, the the only way. Didn't respond. Yeah, sorry about that. The only way that it, it could have been at all fixable is because the supernatural was making it look like it could be. Oh. Now, well, there are t there are two alternate endings to this to this one. I'm doing the one where you guys are able to victoriously get escape and live and go off to your rest to your lives. The other option is you're walking down the crossroads and after a couple hours you find yourself back at the crossroads uh, standing over your own dead bodies as the only materializes and laughs. That's the other one. Yeah, that's the grudge ending. Where you, you succeed because you helped one spirit escape, but you got yourself stuck instead. In that ending, can we stay and try and kill the Oni? <laughs> that would make an interesting haunted area, yeah. I can imagine the next adventure coming through saying, Oh great, we're stuck between a, warring, a war of Uray and an Oni. And that is the one-shot adventure for Kudo. That was interesting. I like it. Yeah. The next one on my list is Numenera. So that, because that one got the next most uh, votes. Interesting. Will it I'm... be? Go on. I was just going to say, I, I hope people who want to play are prepared for rants, though. Yeah, we've already heard it played with Knights of the Night, me and uh, Doc. And we're kind of iffy on the D20 on the system. I'm probably going to do it with the optional rules that effort can be spent after the fact. That should help a lot. Hopefully. Anyway, I'm going to stop the recording now. And that cool. was uh, Kuro. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. And so that was Kuro. I will note that again that I did not use all the powers available to the to the um, Oni, and I did not go with the full out uh, grudge style difficulty level that where the Oni would have uh, totally overwhelmed them. We were running out of time because one of our players had to leave off to go do something, so I kind of we kind of rushed the I kind of rushed the fight with the Oni at the end to make it easier to so that we could uh, cut it off quickly. If I had to do it over again and I had time to run that, I probably would have had the Oni use the shotgun at one point, would have made it more difficult to get the uh, way clear to the um, the bus, and would have probably brought the zombies back in um, and made it more... But uh, it, it still came to a cl uh, rather close climax. I didn't manage to anybody and that awesome role by uh, Anne's Anne playing um, her character Haruka at the end with her makeshift Naginata was just really wonderful I really liked that um, players had fun overall we definitely liked this this setting and this uh, the system was solid and it worked and it does fairly well for the Japanese whore now, I'm going to go ahead and put on some discussion. It's not necessarily about um, the game, but it's just some random discussion, that jokes that I, got, I cut out for keeping the story going in the regular uh, session. And I'm going to put that on at the end here in just a moment. 
I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough, and I hope it encourages you to go look at Cubicle 7's books and to pick up Kuro for yourself. It's supposed to transition onto another game called Kuro Tensai, which I am suspecting is going to involve characters that are quite a bit more supernaturally adept and capable of doing more than running away from the evil. Can we make that a quote for this game? I thought John's, John's hands were full of girls. I thought John's hands were full of girls. Yeah, that sounds like a good title. <laughs> or quote or anything. Okay. Yeah, so that had to be a dead one, didn't it? Just the way you like him. Ouch. <laughs> I was referring to vampires. You do like vampire girls. This is true. <laughs> But when you say it like that, it makes me sound perverted. Okay. Okay. I would like to make a quick nod to one of my players who is a self-published author and try to direct people towards his book, Tenjin. It is a dark fantasy of gods, heroes, and villains. To read the blurb on it, Tenjin, a wanderer, comes across a dying warrior on the road. Taking up the fallen man's sword, he finds himself cast in the role of a hero chosen by the star goddesses. Struggling to rise to challenge against rogue martial artists, powerful spirits, and even the imperial army itself, can a lowly wanderer save a small town from a living hell? It is a quite well-written book. I very much enjoyed it. It is still on my Kindle now, and I do highly recommend people picking up if they can. Thank you. So, I don't just play these games. I also do a, a, a bit of developing on my own. I currently have an RPG based off of the Strands of Fate system by Void Star Studios up for sale on um, Drive Through RPG. The link will be below. I also have a couple of novels set in different world settings. One of the world settings is the same as the RPG I just mentioned, and I have several short stories as well. If you would like to pick any of these up to help support me in my endeavors, uh, buying that does, I use that for food and other necessities as well as occasionally picking up a, a small independent game. Uh, I try to support the independent game industry because I am an part of the independent game industry and the self-published game, self-published novelist industry. So I kind of want to help other people in the same thing, which is why part of why I'm doing the one shots. Even though I have a lot of, uh, I'm going to be doing some of the uh, big end games like Numenera, Champions, and all that. I also want to pick up a lot of. Independent games like Must Be Tuesday, Monsters of the Week, or other such things. In any case, I do hope you take a look at some of my games or any other independent game uh, designer's stuff or independent novelist stuff. Thank you.